Hey, good afternoon, and welcome to Corpus Christi. We listen to the Lord speaking to Abram today. God is here with us, promising presence and love. Our main celebrant is Father Jacob, and Deacon Bob is assisting. Let us joyfully celebrate this Mass by singing together the hymn number 660. Please stand. <laughs> called us to be a people set apart. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let's start again, shall we? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Father. The Lord has called us to be a people set apart, truly, as we heard in the, in the hymn. And so we ask that he would have mercy on us, forgive us our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask all of our all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, 
who who accredited him to him as an act of righteousness. He then said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of Chaldeans to give you this land as a possession. O Lord God, he asked, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He answered him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old she-goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Abram brought him all these, split them in two, and placed each half opposite the other, but the birds he did not cut up. Birds of prey swooped down on the carcasses, but Abram stayed with them. As the sun was about to set, a trance fell upon Abram, and a deep, terrifying darkness enveloped him. When the sun had set and it was dark, there appeared a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch, which passed between those pieces. It was on that occasion that the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the wadi of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Join with others in being imitators of me, brothers and sisters, and observe those who thus conduct themselves according to the model you have in us. For many, as I have often told you, and now tell you even in tears, conduct themselves as enemies of the cross of Christ. 
Their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is in their shame. Their minds are occupied with earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we also await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, in this way stand firm in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up the mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face was changed in appearance, and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were conversing with him, Moses and Elijah who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions had been overcome by sleep, but becoming fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As they were about to part from him, Peter, and J- Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But he did not know what he was saying. While he was still speaking, a cloud came and cast a shadow over them, and they became frightened when they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my chosen son. Listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They fell silent and did as did not at that time tell anyone what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, our Lord appears in shining glory with Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets. Moses, the giver of the law to God's people, and Elijah, the greatest of the prophets. So Jesus appears flanked by um, the signs of God's goodness to his people, the law and the prophets. And you know, sometimes when we have altar servers, Um, when the deacon comes to proclaim the gospel, what does he have with him? The two lights on either side of the gospel, the law and the prophets. Because how do we, how are we able to read the gospel? By what light do we understand who Jesus is, what he came to tell us by the law and by the prophets? So it's so important who is with him, who is with him there in glory on the top of that mountain, that it is Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets. Our God doesn't change his mind about what he wants to do. He's one God, 
the same God who formed Adam and Eve, the same God who called Abram out of Ur of the Chaldees, um, who made that covenant with him that we heard about today, the same God who called his people out of Egypt to give them a land, is the same God who walked by the seashore and called Peter and James and John out of their boats and they dropped everything and they followed after him. They believed in his call and they followed after him. And now they had been wandering around with Jesus, this itinerant man who had no place to lay his head. They'd seen his goodness and his great works and his works of power, healing the sick, raising the dead even, casting out demons, proclaiming that the kingdom of God was at hand, so repent and believe in the gospel. But they'd also certainly had a hard time following after him with no place to lay their heads, uh, sometimes without even enough food in the wilderness. They'd been sent out to proclaim the kingdom without even a second cloak, without food, without sandals, or just with sandals for their feet. And now, just before they have this experience we hear about today, our Lord had started speaking to them that he must go to Jerusalem and be betrayed and suffer and die. And so certainly, they might have had some reason to wonder, what is it that we're about following after this, this Jesus? But our Lord brings them up the mountain. His face is changed in appearance. His clothing becomes dazzling white. God appears to them on the top of this mountain. He shows his glory. And indeed, some of the... Uh, Church fathers would tell us that this wasn't a miracle today. It's actually the other 33 years of his life that was a miracle that he was veiling his glory the rest of the time, miraculously. This is the one day he lets it shine forth because he is, after all, always God, as well as being completely man, Jesus Christ with us. But God lets them see his glory on the top of that mountain. What a tremendous gift he has given to them, to strengthen them, to continue to follow him, to strengthen them in their faith, to strengthen them to continue to live that faith, following after him even all the way to Jerusalem and after. And you know, we hear much the same story again and again in the scriptures. God called Abram, who was a man living in Ur of the Chaldees, wherever that is, or of the Chaldeans. And he called him out of that comfortable life he was leading, and Abram believed in God's call. And so he went. And he wandered in the wilderness for about three chapters, having many misadventures, but experiencing always over and over again God's goodness and his love for him. He got him out of trouble in Egypt. He got him out of trouble in, uh, in uh, Sodom and Gomorrah when he went to war with, to get back his brother-in-law. It's all very complicated. But what's important is that God got him out of trouble again and again and again. God showed him his faithfulness. God had made promises to him that he was going to have an inheritance like the stars of the sky, like the sand of the seashore. But already Abram and his wife Sarai were old and they'd been wandering in the desert after all for an awful long time. And Abram might have had some reason to wonder what it is that this God was getting him into. But so God makes a covenant with Abram with a three-year-old heifer and a she-goat, a ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he appears to Abram, a burning torch and a flaming, smoking fire pot. In some other translations, that's translated as a brazier, um, 
which is a fire pot. It's a great big stone bowl, right, where you keep, where you burn a fire and you put incense in it. And I'll never forget sitting at St. Pius X Catholic Church in Urbandale, Iowa, and it was teen week. So all the, you know, 14 and 15 year olds were reading. And a, uh, one of the kids got up and he, and he talked about how God appeared to Abraham in a flaming brassiere. <laughs> and you know, there's a lot of good that God wants to speak. And always this story has been firmly lodged in my mind ever since then. I have never for a moment forgotten it. So now I guess I've passed that on to you. You're welcome. Uh, but God appears to Abraham. God makes a covenant with Abram. God, who is greater than the universe, who is immortal and invisible, who's the maker of the whole world, who no man can even see and live, appears to Abraham and binds himself with a covenant. He limits himself. He restricts himself that I have promised and I will do it. And he appears to Abraham, Abram, who will be Abraham, of course. And of course, we might also be put in mind of another mountaintop where God worked great wonders for his people uh, when he had called his people out of slavery in Egypt. Right? They passed through the Red Sea. They believed his call. He worked signs and wonders to free them from Pharaoh. And then they were wandering in the desert in a wilderness. And though God worked wonders for them, they had seen him work the plagues to free them. They had seen him part the Red Sea. They had seen him go before them in a pillar of cloud and of fire. It didn't take very long and they got awfully fed up with this God and wondering what he was about after all, leading them out here to die in this wilderness. And wouldn't it be better if they just went back to Egypt? But God brought Moses, the leader of the people, up the mountain, and in thunder and lightning and cloud and flaming glory, he appeared to the people and showed his glory to them and gave them the law to make them his people, to show them how how to be his people, to give them strength to continue. And we are in just the same situation as Abram and as all the Israelites and as Peter and James and John. We too have been called by God to follow after him. Our God in his goodness and his mercy in his love has called us to be himself, to be his people. He has called us to be with him, to be his people. He has worked wonders for us. So many of us could give an accounting of all the ways in our lives God has been at work for us, all the ways he's been so good to us, all the ways he's given us his blessing, all the ways he's gotten us out of trouble, like Abram, like the Israelites, certainly the greatest of these that he has called us to be his sons and daughters, that we've passed through water of baptism, out of slavery in Egypt, out of anonymity in uh, Ur of the Chaldees, out of um, a bland life in the boat with uh, Peter and James and John to follow after him. We have seen his goodness over and over, but nevertheless, as we're following after him, perhaps we find ourselves in the wilderness, and indeed explicitly now in Lent we find ourselves in the wilderness. And perhaps we're wondering, what is it that we're about anyway, following after this God, this Lord Jesus Christ? And would it have been better to just stay in Egypt or in Ur or in our fishing boats? Because God has called us to change our lives. He's called us to leave Egypt behind. He's called us to leave Ur He's called us to leave everything and be with him, each of us in some way, some of us in, in uh, more physical and, and obvious ways, some people in less, less externally obvious ways, but every single one of us, he has called to, to leave behind the other world, called to follow him. 
And we don't have to do that. We don't have to change our lives. We don't have to go out into the wilderness. Abram didn't have to leave Ur of the Chaldeans. And the Israelites didn't have to leave Egypt. And Peter and James and John didn't have to leave their fishing boats to follow Jesus. But if Abraham had not left Ur, then he would never have seen that flaming torch and that smoking fire pot pass through and God commit himself to him. And he would never have received his son and he would never have been promised the, this land that he received from our God that his descendants did. It, the Israelites didn't have to leave it. Egypt, but they would never have received the law. They would never have passed into the promised land. And Peter and James and John did not have to leave their fishing boats. Jesus didn't force them to. But they never would have seen all those people healed or been sent by Jesus Christ to preach that kingdom. And they never would have been on top of that mountain and heard God's voice saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And we too do not have to leave our comfortable lives to be in the wilderness with Jesus Christ, where he has certainly called us, each and every one of us. But if we will not, then indeed we are like those many who conduct ourselves as enemies of the cross of Christ, whose God is our stomach, whose, whose glory is our shame, whose minds are occupied by earthly things. This is the choice. Or we can go out into the wilderness. We can go out into the desert with Christ. We can follow him. We can be different than all those around us. We can be different than the world tells us to be. And indeed, this Lent explicitly, we can dethrone our stomach as our God by fasting. We can occupy our minds not with earthly things, but with heavenly things through prayer. We can place our glory not in our shame, but in our God through almsgiving. We can have our citizenship in heaven, just as Abram chose to do, just as God's people Israel chose to do when they left Egypt, just as Peter and James and John chose to do when they followed Jesus Christ, when they dropped their nets. As Christians, we cannot stay in Ur. We cannot stay in Egypt, and we cannot stay in the boat. If we want to follow Christ, if we want our citizenship to be in heaven, where Christ has promised to lead us, then we have to go out. We have to leave that, those things behind, each and every one of us in some way. Some of us, perhaps in more visible ways, some of us who are who are young, perhaps, in, uh, in crazy ways, we, as we hear in the saints, as we see in like religious brothers and sisters, to leave everything behind and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Each and every one of us is called. And if we will do that, if we will follow our Lord into the desert, then we have his promise. As he appeared to Abraham in that vision, as he appeared to Peter and James and John, in his glory at the top of that mountain. We have his firm promise that he will bless us, that he will lead us into that promised land, that he will bless us not just in the future in that promised land, but here and now, today, and in the future, that he will be with us every step of the way. And whether we ourselves have had a mountaintop experience like Peter, James, and John, and what a blessing that is if we have, in prayer or in some other experience, heard the voice of the Lord in that way, or whether perhaps we've just heard about it, whether perhaps we have faith through the word of so many saints, through the word of the apostles, through the word of God's people Israel that we hear about in the scriptures, God has bound himself by a covenant. God has promised us his blessing. And we know we can believe in that promise. So we don't have to hesitate. We don't have to be scared to leave Ur. We don't have to be like the Israelites and pine for the, the flesh pots of Egypt like they did. 
we don't have to be like Peter, James, and John. Well, they, they really didn't. They uh, were faithful to the Lord until the cross. But we don't have to long for those boats and the nets. With confidence, let's step out into the desert. With confidence, let's place our citizenship not in this world but in heaven. With confidence, let's go with our Lord. Because he is the source of all blessing, our God himself, the maker of heaven and earth. And he keeps his promises. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was born of the Virgin Mary, and he came there. For our sake, he was my right hand to God, who suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We have a God who keeps his promises, and so with confidence in him, we present our prayers and our petitions. Our response is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord in, in your, your mercy, mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of us, that we would be imitators of the saints and have our citizenship in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord in your mercy, mercy, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, that way they will strive for peace, especially in the area of Ukraine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord in your mercy, mercy, hear our prayer. For the elect and the candidates among us, preparing for Easter sacraments, that this community will sustain them in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord in, in your mercy, mercy hear our prayer. For those living under tyranny, that their faith in God be an enduring source of strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our parish community, that we would be a mountaintop where God's people encounter the Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that the Lord will be their light and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we remember Jason Christopher Duff, whose intentions we honor at this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord in your mercy, mercy, hear our prayer. Transfigure these prayers, Lord God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that what we ask in word may be fulfilled in deed. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our preparation song has been changed to 112, 112. i 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love, for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim, who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
There are stations across offered at Our Lady of Carter Lake on Mondays during Lent at 6 p.m. and they're followed by a soup supper. It was very good last week and I'm sure it is every week. There are stations of cross offered here at Corpus Christi on Thursday nights at 6 p.m. right before the Mass. That's even a better supper. So, also, we want to thank you for watching the video last weekend on the annual diocesan appeal. And we ask that every family in our parish pray for the pro success and the, of the appeal and consider making a gift. Either a one-time gift or pledge that can be paid through the month of December. Your pledge card can be placed in the collection basket. It can be brought, brought in and, or mailed to, to the parish office or ma mailed directly back to the diocese. Or you can give online. How many more light ways can there be? <laughs> and uh, we need your help in meeting our parish's annual diocesan appeal goal and sustaining the Catholic Church in southwest Iowa. Remember, if we meet our goal, our parish will receive an additional gifts for our local needs. And every gift, regardless of size, is a vital part of the success of the annual diocesan appeal. So we thank you for your generosity and your kindness. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Bow your heads for the blessing. Bless your people, we pray, O Lord, with a, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our sending for song is number 121, led by the Spirit. 121. Thank you. 